Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, and in today's video we're going to be talking about angular momentum, which is something very similar to regular momentum. As a matter of fact, the equations are almost identical. Regular momentum is P equals mass times velocity, and angular momentum is going to be capital L for some reason, I have no idea why, but capital L is equal to I times omega. And the reason why this is so similar is because mass is basically the same thing as moment of inertia, and velocity is basically the same thing as omega, just one is for the translational world of physics, the other is for the rotational world of physics. So there we go, there's our equation right there. But the more interesting thing with angular momentum is not the equation itself, but the conservation of angular momentum, which is to say that L initial equals L final, very similar to how we had P initial equals P final back in our conservation of momentum days. So we're going to be solving some problems today that use conservation of angular momentum and then hopefully you'll feel confident for the homework or the quiz or the test or whatever reason you're watching this video. So here's going to be the first one. Let's say I have a disc on a spinning spool and this disc which has moment of inertia I equals one half m r squared. Let's say it's spinning with an angular speed of four radians per second in this direction. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to drop an identical disc on top of the first one, so now that together, stacked on top of each other, they're spinning with some unknown speed, omega final, which you're gonna be solving for. I do want to say that initially, when the second disc is dropped, it is not spinning. In other words, that angular speed is zero, so the question is, how do I find omega final? So the good news is it's the conservation of angular momentum equation. There's really only one equation to use here. We're gonna find Li and set it equal to Lf. Li is I times omega for the left picture. Now, one thing you do have to consider here, since I do have two disks, I do have to add the two angular momentums together. Meaning, angular momentum for the first disk is I, one half m r squared times omega, which is four, plus i times omega for the second disc. Second disc we said was identical, so it's still i equals one half m r squared. But that angular speed is zero because it's not moving, meaning my l initial is just going to be one half times four, two m r squared plus zero. So I don't even need to write that part. So it's just two m r squared. Now for LF, angular momentum final. Looking at this picture, I would say that the I value, since they're grouped together, is one half m r squared times two, because again, they're grouped together, the two disks. So LF equals one half m r squared times two, and then times omega final, which is what we're solving for. The one half and the two do cancel, so it looks like LF is equal to just m r squared times omega final. Now remember, we're saying angular momentum is conserved, which means L initial equals L final. So two m r squared is equal to m r squared omega final, and we're solving for omega final. We can say that m r squareds cancel out, and you're just left with two equals omega final, and is that the answer? Yes. The final angular speed is two radians per second in the same direction as before. And so that's it, that's it for the first problem. We do have one more problem we're gonna be looking at. This one is going to be harder. For this next one, let's say we have the Earth. Beautiful picture. And what's going to happen is that there's going to be an asteroid that is heading towards the Earth and it strikes it tangent to its path right there. And so originally the earth was rotating with some initial speed omega naught. That was the initial angular speed of the earth as it was rotating. But now after this collision where again the asteroid is going to be stuck to the earth, this new angular speed is now going to be two omega naught. In other words, the earth is spinning twice as fast. The day has just become half as short. It's not 24 hours anymore, it's 12 hours. That's not gonna matter for the problem. I'm just helping you contextualize what's going on here. So let's say the mass of the Earth is capital M and the mass of the asteroid is one-tenth M. 
This asteroid was initially heading towards the Earth at some speed, which you are going to be solving for in terms of variables. And the last thing I'll say to solve this, the moment of inertia for the Earth is equal to, if it's a perfect sphere, two-fifths m r squared. And again, I want you to solve for the initial velocity in terms of the following variables, mass, radius, capital R, omega initial, and that's it. So how are we going to solve this? First of all, this is a collision, so we are going to be using conservation of angular momentum, Li equals Lf. Initial angular momentum is the angular momentum of the Earth plus the angular momentum of the asteroid. That means L initial is equal to I times omega, two-fifths m r squared times omega, which we said was omega naught for the Earth. And now I have to add the angular momentum for the asteroid. You may be thinking the asteroid's not spinning, or if it is, I didn't say it was spinning. But that is not the angular momentum for the asteroid, and that's because the asteroid is a point source of mass. Now, why is that important? It's because if you remember, moment of inertia I for a point source of mass is m r squared, which means the mass of the asteroid is one tenth m. Its radius is not the radius of the asteroid, it's how far away it is from the center of the object, the Earth. And if you think about it, that distance it is away is the whole radius of the Earth, capital R. So that's capital R squared. And so I just want to stop myself for a second because maybe you're confused or you think I'm going too fast of where I'm getting these numbers. And if you think that, and you're probably right, I am doing this pretty fast. But the way I'm getting all of these numbers right here, one-tenth m times r squared, all has to do with point sources of mass and moment of inertia. In other words, if you're confused by these numbers and how I'm getting them, you should check out other physics videos made by me or whoever on moment of inertia for a point source of mass. Because I'm assuming you understand this already going into this problem. Anyways, this is the moment of inertia for the asteroid times omega for the asteroid. Again, this is not the speed that the asteroid's spinning. It's the speed that it's kind of going around the Earth. Now, obviously, this asteroid's not going around the Earth exactly. That's because it has a linear velocity v, which is why you need to remember this other equation, v equals omega times r, which you can use here to solve for omega. Omega is equal to v over r. R, therefore and since angular momentum is equal to I times Omega and we've already got the I sorted out that means Omega I'm gonna write V over R and this V right here is ultimately what I'm solving for in this question so that's it for L initial next I got to find L final which is not gonna be easy either but it's going to be again the angular momentum for the earth plus the angular momentum for the asteroid the angular momentum for the Earth has really not changed that much. It's still two-fifths times mass times radius squared. But now omega is now twice omega. And then plus angular momentum for the asteroid. That's going to be, again, still a point source of mass, we're saying. So I equals mr squared, where the mass is one-tenth m times r squared. But now it's omega is going to be the same omega as the Earth because they're moving together. It got stuck on the Earth and they're moving together. In other words, that is two omega naught right there. And so I'm gonna try and simplify L final as much as I can. For instance, two fifths times two is four fifths m r squared omega naught plus one tenth times two is one fifth m r squared omega naught meaning four-fifths plus one-fifth, these are all like terms, so I can add them together to make one m r squared omega naught, and that is my L final. Remember now, I'm setting this equal to L initial, so L initial was two-fifths m r squared omega naught, plus for the asteroid, we said it was one-tenth m r squared times v over r, and now we're saying this equal to L final, which is m r squared omega naught. So if I'm solving for v right here, the first thing I'm doing is I am subtracting two-fifths m r squared omega naught from both sides. There's multiple ways to solve this, so if you're doing a different way, that still might be okay, but I'm going to do it my way, because I'm making this video. 
So left side now we remained with 1 tenth m r squared v over r. On the right side, this was 1 m r squared omega naught. So 1 minus 2 fifths is 3 fifths m r squared omega naught. Now we can do two things. Number one, mass does cancel. You can also cancel out the r squareds here. If you decide to reduce the r squared with the r here, that doesn't cancel out perfectly. And that's fine, we'll still get the same answer, but you're gonna go down a different path than I am. Anyways, the left side, you're just left with 1 tenth times v over r. On the right, I have 3 fifths times omega naught. And so if I wanna solve for v, first I can multiply both sides by 10, like this. And that will give me V over R is equal to 3 fifths times 10 is just 6 omega naught. And then multiply both sides by R. So it looks like V, the velocity of this asteroid, is equal to 6 times omega naught times the radius of the Earth. And there is our answer for that one. Very difficult problem. If it's confusing to you, then you're probably gonna have to watch this video again two or three times because it's really complicated. And if you do have any questions, please post them in the comments below and I'd be happy to answer them for you. So thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.